Hi everyone, this is Jackie Cooper with J. Cooper Travels, Love Travel Scotland, and Crypto Mom 2, all of my various talk shows because I'll be sharing this out on a variety of platforms. So I want to welcome everyone to today's chat and I would like to also remind you please to definitely subscribe to my um, YouTube channels. I am definitely building them and I need your support because there's many things I would like to do with them and I have um, over 20,000 connections on all my social media, but for some reason, my YouTube channel has been growing a little bit slower. And so I'm asking everyone in my connection to please like and subscribe. So today I'm having a follow-up conversation with an organization that's very close to my heart. They educate children um, and they are doing a wonderful job. And we were chatting the other day about uh, what they need and in terms of uniforms and trees and other other uh, supplies and services. And we decided that we were gonna hop on to do a follow-up conversation. So today we are going to be sharing both the, the website and contact information, even though as you can see on the screen, there is an email. So you can definitely reach out and ask any questions that you might have. But um, before I introduce my guest today, for those that are new to my talk shows, let me just share a little bit more about me. Um, my background's very diverse. I'm definitely an entrepreneur. I do um, solar consulting. I do blockchain consulting. I'm an author. I've written a number of books that are published on Amazon. And um, I'm also a lawyer. So I do legal consulting. And um, I, I believe that we are all, you know, um, here for a purpose and service is one of them, you know, helping others and how we help others can be in a variety of ways. So the talk shows I started um, are to provide education and information so that way everyone who's listening can find a way to um, find happiness for themselves in what they're doing. And that's the other reason why I started my Happiness Factor News blog, because again, as we navigate our life, sometimes there are different ups and downs that we have, and we're all trying to find balance. Um, and we're all trying to, to see how we can connect with others. So I'm in Maryland, but we are gonna be hopping over to Kenya. And I'm very excited to have you on. How are you doing today? Okay, thank you very much, Jackie. My name is Adeline Sirimon. I'm the founder and director of JD Foundation. JD Foundation started the way back in 2015. Before then, I was working with some Somali NGOs where I was a donor relation person. And she, we had so many problems that Somali people are going through. And the same problem could be reflected back at my home in Mount Elgon. If you heard about Mount Elgon, we've had so many things whereby we had what we call children are being referred into militia groups that's way back in 2006 and also the people have been having conflicts inter conflicts and intra conflicts where people used to sleep outside including me some years back when i was young i remember my mom and my parents my dad we used to sleep in a banana plantation because people could raid our homes oh. at night and they could touch the houses so we had nowhere to sleep and it continued like that. At some point, you could just see people being killed and you could just see their intestine because they are ready, the cattle are being taken away by the thieves. It was so difficult for us when we were young. And a time came, I say, maybe it reached a point whereby I could bring change to my community. And so when it reached that point, a time just reached and I found this need for me, given the experience that I had and having gone to school beyond my village level, I had gone to the university and done some courses that industrial relation and diplomacy. I decided to go back and give to the community. And I decided to say education is the most important thing because with the education, people can think at least they cannot go back and torture or kill. You cannot be told go and kill and you kill when, once you are learning person, you have you are thinking. Yes. So what happened when I started the joint foundation? I was with the community. I used to work with the community back at my home in Mount Elgon, and we could share the problems that the community are going through. And we identified that education is the most important thing that people need to know. Secondly, health water sanitation and health 
So indeed, when we prioritize our needs, now we start working as a community together, together, slowly by slowly. And it reached a point whereby I was able to interact and got some partners who came to the community to support us. I started with the organizing community camps, workshops, education stakeholders meeting because I was a bit able to network with the people from national level and global. And by grace, they were able also to support me. They could give me some assistance whereby I could organize a meeting with the education stakeholders and all of them could come. Even my partners from Nairobi, international level could come on the ground and could support it. And everything that we used to talk, it used to be implemented. So I got the voice from the community. It's a patriarchal society. Mount Elgon is a patriarchal society where they value men. Men talk a lot, they do a lot. But once you are a lady, you are always undermined. They say you're a minority. You are not supposed to speak before men. But because of the grace and that voice that I had in me, inside me, I said I have to do something for my people. And indeed, it has changed, has created a change in my society, so to speak, now. Because what we've done is a lot. We've supported, we've got some people who have supported some children, they need children. We had high cases of early pregnancy. But because of we used to voice, I personally, sometimes I could be on the media, I could talk and voice up and people could come up and raise the alarm. And so it's used, it has gone a bit down, so to speak. We came up on the issue also, the community, what it has been going through, especially on education issues. We learned that why are people fighting at the community level? They are fighting because they don't, they don't have their knowledge. No one is there to empower them. They are used that fighting becomes the order of the day. So they were not used to maybe bringing people together to create peace whereby you have to come up and talk peacemaking or peace building. For them, for people, especially when you go to this world torn countries, what happened? People used to fighting because it's the order of the day. But we have to come up with the unequal solution on how non violence means of solving the conflict. So we are able to talk with the community, bring the people on board, bring the parent on board, bring the children on board and telling them what is causing this problem. So we have to speak as a community. We could have elders, they could voice up their voice, they tell us what is the problem. We have the women also come out and have to tell us what their problem. And now the solution comes from the society. Now it becomes self-centered. Yeah. Where People have to come up with their own solutions. They know they are the one who have caused all the problems they have been going through. Because it, like he, in the year 2017, 2017, we used we had several camps on health choices for a better future, talking on health. And we realized when we brought these children on board, the ages 10 to 24 years, it was about mentoring them on how they can become. HIV free and they become resilient and they can do things economically be empowered so that they should not rely on handouts whereby sometimes they go out with these people, they get pregnant, then it becomes an issue at the society. So you are able to empower these girls. At the same time, you also empower the boys because sometimes these boys are the ones who are causing these women girls to become pregnant. So the moment we educate the boys, they also go back at their parents and they tell them what their plan is very important because it helps them to protect their girls also because girls are also good when they do well in future, they are assets to their parents. Indeed, we've done it and we've done a lot. Children have gone to school right now, so to speak. We've had so many children, some of them have graduated. They're working. They're, this year when I was there, we are implementing three program project. What happened is that I met one of the students, the campus, the one I mentored during those community camps. He's one of the teacher in that school. The girls have doing other jobs somewhere else. They have already been empowered and they have become, they are giving back to the society because they feel it's good to educate your people. Since they say, when you are rich and the community around you are poor, you suffer a lot because they always come and attack you. So we are spreading that gospel of helping each other to ensure that education is very paramount in this 
world the way we are staying right now, everyone needs education. Everyone needs good health because health is wealth. That's what they say. And also we are working on the other tree environmental program where we talk of planting of trees. As the Jody Foundation, so far as I speak right now, we've gone much, much far compared where we were five, seven years ago. Because when you look at Jody Foundation, people can talk of it as an international organization. Why am I saying this? It is because what we studied and how we do it, it has created impact. When you go to the village at the community level, they are seeing the impact. You cannot compare with the other organization because they say, if this organization speaks, they are going to do this. They mean it and they will do it. Because when we came up with the meeting, education stakeholders meeting, what happened? There are so many issues who are raised. We, are, we had so many absentees in school. And what was the cause of student being absent in school? It's poverty. The family, the background where they come from, people are economically poor. And she, as the Jody Foundation, we saw the needs. What? Why are these people poor? Why? Why? Why these children are becoming absent in schools? They are going back to home. They are being sent away because from school they don't have school uniform. And when they go back home, the parent will take them to go and farm or do some labor so they can get some cash to come and support their parents. So you see, it reduces the number of those present in school. So we say for us to cap absenteeism, let us come in and support where we can. And that's why we came up with the project of schools uniforms, whereby we are able to provide uniform to these needy children, the way you can see from the picture they have shown. We are able to support these children. We get the partners, they support us with some few dollars, and euros, pounds, and we buy school uniform for these children so that we keep them in school and also raise their self-esteem. Because Jude Foundation, Jude Foundation realized that these children, were, while they are in school, they feel inferior. They develop that inferiority complex because they see others in full school uniform. While for them, they are barefoot with tattered clothes, that one from home is not even a school uniform. So they feel they are not part of it. And some of them don't even go to school because of that fear. And now for giving them uniform, we build, we raise their self-esteem. And also they are able to perform even in class. And even they wish to say one day they also give back to the community because they say education is power. Education is power because when you get that knowledge, the knowledge that you get, you are empowered with from school. You are able to do something. You can go to your, to your line of expertise. You are able to say, let me, I want to be an engineer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a nurse. And you focus towards that one, you work hard and you get it. So for those who are able, there's some of them who are unable to get school fees. If we have the capacity, we also connect them with some of our partners who can support those individual students who are needing to get their scholarship and they continue with their studies. That Jody has made a milestone on that. Again, we talk of the school tree planting. The tree planting, where did we decide the tree planting project? We see the environment, what is happening currently. Jody Foundation, the vision, healthy, educated and empowered society. And we have to empower these people. They're cutting down trees. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do when they cut down trees? There's, they're reducing, okay, there's, they're causing soil erosion. Their carbon, carbon emission is going up. And yet Mount Helgon is the source of many rivers. So we saw it is very good to support this climate change. That is SDG, Sustainable Development Goal 13 by empowering the schools because everything starts with the school. When we go to the community, we say we plant the trees from the community, the parents will cut them down and they will not even care about it. But while in school, it's able to be protected because teachers are there. The school administration is there, so it will protect everything. We said, let us plant trees so that we can now improve this. We can at least reduce soil erosion. We can okay, improve 
afforestation. That's what we are looking at because trees, they are very important. It's also in our health because when you look at dry places where there's no rain, it's very dry. People suffer a lot. There are so many diseases that are coming up because of the dust and so forth. But with the trees, there's good environment. It makes you feel, even if you are stressed mentally, I say when you're stressed, when you smell the smell of the trees, those fresh, fresh flat trees, leaves, you feel you are really energized and you feel comfortable and you then can walk around. These trees will provide a very good environment for the future. Also, it will attract more rain. It will reduce carbon emission. So things will change and will be promoting the SDGs. That's what we've been working on. Yes, we've been working and we really thank, we thank you partners who have been supporting us because indeed without you, we will not be the way we are. Because when I look back, the milestone we made, it's because of your one dollar, one dollar, even a day one dollar to help this child acquire school uniform. This one dollar has made this child to go to school. It has caused her to have high self-esteem. She can, she or he can speak before people. It has caused her to be trained on health choices, how she can protect herself from early pregnancy, sexual transmitted infections. It has made this child to more to know that there are good things ahead. It's because of your one dollar, your one euro, your one pound. Indeed, it is you who has made it possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I welcome you indeed to Jody Foundation because you are the one who has made it to be the way it is right now. As much as we see, we receive so many people who are coming in and talking about the Jody Foundation, you being the one, we really say thank you for your one pound, your one dollar, your one euro. Please, if you are willing to support us, you want to support us, don't fear. That one dollar does a lot for us. That one dollar, that one euro, that one pound is doing great for us. You may see it's a something that is very small, but for us, it's changing lives. It is taking children to school. It is planting trees. It is educating people on mental health. It's supporting them in many ways. Please, for you to reach us, feel free to write to us at agentfoundation at gmail.com or go to our website and donate. That is jody.foundation. That is it. You are most welcome for our projects. We deal with the environment. We deal with education. We deal with the health. We are really supporting many things because it's the community we are, who are giving us, despite what we started with. But the community have come up with many things and they are telling us because of the capacity and what we are doing at the community, they have built trust in us. And they say we have the capacity to do it. And when you receive trust from the community, the stakeholders believe in you. They know that you have a lot of work ahead. You need to work hard because you have to provide for them because they cannot go to someone whom they know they will not deliver. For us, as we started, it was a job foundation dealing with education, environment, health, water and sanitation. But even economic empowerment has come in right now, so to speak. We have a project on economic empowerment that needs to kick off, but we are looking for funds. Hmm? You are calling, we are, you are one dollar, we are looking for your one pound, your one euro will help us because we have to empower these women who have come up and they want us to help them so that they can be economically empowered, so that they can support their children who are in school because the donation alone will not be enough for them. There are so many other needs that the parents need to support their children. And so as the Jody Foundation, we saw it is wise for us to empower these women on income generating activities, whereby we have, so that when they do agriculture, they look of what we call val addition. We are going to train them on val addition so that if they're planting their crops, it's not going to go on a waste, but it's going to do something good. They can store it and sell it and market it later if the market is good. And the, the money that will come out of it, which will be supporting these children that we are supporting right now, in the future, they'll be sustainable. At least they'll be able to provide some needs, not all, but 
There are other needs that we cannot even talk. There are so many things that children are going through. We thank you so much, Jackie Cooper, for this podcast. Thank you so much for helping us. Indeed, it has done us great because we are doing great. It is you who is supporting us. You partners, you people who are watching us, please. You are really helping us. Don't stop helping us. You are one pound, you are one dollar, you are one euro. It's doing great. It's changing lives in the community. It's changing life of those vulnerable children who cannot even go to school. It's providing school uniform for that child who's unable even to have a cloth and call it, mom, I'm going to school. Right now, children are going to school and they are happy and they are dancing and they are very healthy because they feel they are part of the others. And sometimes they smile and look at themselves because of you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I I totally support everything you're saying. I do want to kind of bring up another um, area that you had mentioned about the uniforms. Um, I know that when you and I were talking about the uniforms, mm -hmm. it these are specially designed uniforms. So it's not like they can be shipped because the cost of shipping is expensive. So um, usually what kind of a donation um, is uh, do you mm -hmm. require for uh, creating a uniform for a child? What would be a donation for a boy or a girl that you would you would ask people to donate? Okay, for a uniform, we say of only $50 per uniform per child. That's yeah. what we call it, yes. So it's not, you know, overall for those that are in other countries, it's, that's not a lot of money, $50. Um, you know, again, that will, um, and those uniforms are, um, how long do they last? And are they reused and given to other children? How does that work? What happens the way children use this uniform? It depends with the how they use it because there are those who, are, who don't know how to use clothes. It can take one year, others can take two years. And others can take three years because, you know, these are the village children. So yes. there's those one when they go home, the parents will tell them, now you've been given this one to support your education. Make sure that you take care of your uniform until you finish the primary level. You finish a certain class. That is it. So also for those that are listening, you know, remember when children have uniforms uh, because they play, you know, they do get dirty. They do get worn out. Yeah. So, and they grow, kids grow, yes. so they sometimes need other uniforms. So if you are thinking about supporting the uniform donation, then think about doing this maybe on an annual basis. So that way others, um, the, the, as the, as new children come in and as other children that are there grow and become older, then they can get um, new uniforms. I know that um, having new clothes is a very empowering and, you know, again, makes everyone feel good. Um, I know we had talked about the trees and the trees are very important. And uh, this is an area which, um, you know, everyone is, is concerned about climate change, about making sure that we are supporting, you know, the, the earth. So, the donations for the trees about what kind of explain the type of trees you're planting because I know we talked about that and and what kind of donation supports the planting of the trees okay thank you very much Jackie yeah the type of trees that we are planting mostly is we are planting the fruits that is the avocado it depends with the region also because the other type of fruit cannot suit other regions but basically we're planting fruits like avocado and see, we have trees like Equilibria, we have trees like El Gontic, where we call it Olea Welwishi. That is at the, at the tree that is, I call it, it's a traditional tree. It's an indigenous tree and it's very good. It can be used for pre making the boards and other interior. In the house has so many things. It's a very good trees and takes long to mature. So that's what we are measuring in. And also it's a herbal. Elgon teak is a herbal tree. The bark is used for so many medicinal purposes. And that's what our four parents have been using since time in memorial. So we saw because it is getting is getting extinct. That is it, it's been cut. We need to start planting it. And we as a Jody Foundation, we brought started it. And we have a project I call it Adopt a Tree. That is what we are doing currently. It's a project adopt a tree. So we are targeting 
to plant 100 tree per school per school, and we have more than 100 schools. So we are going to have it, whatever we get literally in the terms of, of cash, we plant a tree, adopt a tree. We call it adopt a tree, that is it. And majorly we are going to plant, a, that is Elgon Teak. It's an indigenous tree. In scientific name, is called Olea Welveshi. That is it. I can say it like that. <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And to you, why am I saying that? Already as the staff for Joint Foundation, we have already our nursery where we have started. We have planted. We are waiting it now to transfer them into those uh, pots for transplantation, transplanting. We've already planted. It's very expensive. But now we have to start. We've already started. We've planted some schools. So my colleagues, we and I, we've already said we are going to do it. And we are looking for partners to support us. Supporters say we are going to support the Joint Foundation to plant 100 trees. Yes, because you are looking at per tree, we are going to buy a tree. It's $5 per tree. Because the whole process from planting up to for a get cost of rain, rain patterns, we will not be waiting for rain. We have to do what we call irrigation for it to grow until it reaches a point it start growing itself like that. So the pro project is on. It's adopt a tree program. We are doing it. And even next month, I know I'll be doing it in some school where by we already have the nursery. Others will join us on the process. We've had many people saying it's a good thing. And I'm so glad you have talked about it because even the Minister for Environment called me two weeks ago and told me how's the pro process. I told him we are working on it because we are doing with other solar, what we call solar electrification and solar panels in school. So we are trying the kitchen and using of solar panels also to support the community. It is so important. <laughs> That, no, I'm really excited about the solar side. I know that I um, am connected with a solar company that's based here in the United States called Power. And so if anyone who's listening does not have solar yet, please reach out to me so I can give you a free complimentary consult on whether your house or business would qualify because not every um, house is positioned for the proper sunlight and things like that. You might have too many trees. But again, I think solar planting trees and using solar is very important, you know, as part of the whole um, ecosystem of looking at how do we conserve water? How do we use the resources that are available to us? So that way, um, as you're working, you know, I'm also a teacher. And so I know that our, the next generation, it's, it's really hard to think, you know, that these little kids, they're, they will be us as adults later. And uh, we don't know who who they are or what they're going to create or or how they're going to impact the world because we don't know they're they're everyone has a different fingerprint and how they're going to make a difference in the world just like we are and um, we can't anticipate that but all we can do is nurture them just like we do a plant and provide them with the information that they need so they can then decide within their own spirit how are they going to help others. So, um, you know, again, everyone who's listening, um, you might have more than one charity that you're supporting, and that's great. But I think it's important to look outside of our local community sometimes to support others who are in different countries, because we're all very interconnected, as I always say at the end of all my broadcast. So um, any last minute thoughts that you would like to share before we sign off today? I just say thank you for your support and continue with that heart because you are creating a change. Being a psychologist, I've learned so many things at the community with children and parents, older people. There are so many things they expect, but they don't talk it out. They keep it themselves and it's causing them harm. So it's good that we help them so that they also come up and share. They have many talent. They have many talent that need to be nurtured, but because of that low self-esteem, they are unable to expose their talent. That's why you see that poverty continues like that. But if we continue to help them and nurture them, soon we shall not be having these cases of poverty, poverty, and even 
cutting down of trees and many things that are happening which is not good for us let us come up support them and they know who their value because everyone is talented and gifted differently thank you so much and thank you so much continue supporting us if you want to reach us please email us at agent foundation at gmail.com or check on our website jody.foundation and you'll get us thank you so much thank you so much so for everyone who's listening on the audio side i would ask that you also hop over to the youtube side so you can see the pictures that you know we shared i'll have the uh, the various links embedded below both uh, for the jody foundation as well as for my contacts um, so you can reach out to me on a variety of the things that we talked about and remember, everyone, as I've mentioned before, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We're all so interconnected. We are all a part of one world. And um, and that's what's so exciting about being part of this global community. So thank you so much for, for listening. Definitely like and subscribe. And uh, definitely check out the Jody Foundation's website so you can decide how you might want to support as well. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you.